One of the secrets to this pine is this unusual kink in the trunk, which is very high up. So to help counteract that, we had these, so we had these low branches, but it didn't balance it. It looks so much more better balanced now than it did before. Before it was almost standing quite straight up, which was not quite right with the rest of the tree, it didn't work. But now, I think it's starting to work really well. So rather than trying to disguise this kink in a, a straight trunk, you utilise it to make the feature of the tree, rather than try and hide it. By leaning the tree over to emphasise this kink, then bring the tree back over this side, it's really brought it back into balance. It's gone for, if you look at it uh, simply, you'll see that the apex of the tree is almost over the centre part of the, the centre line of the trunk of the tree, which visually has brought it back into balance. Otherwise it would look like it was falling over too far over that way, so it's got to be brought back this way now. This drop branch here helps to, helps to set off the angle here, but this branch, no, this branch here will now be grown to about probably that length, which will then really bring you back into balance. So it's still got quite a bit more growing to do. It's not never a finished product. There's still a lot more work to do to it. The ginning's got to be refined even more. It's just a, a very thick branch. Those who remember it was a big thick branch yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to be thinned out. The same with the back one here. And it will all, all, all happen over the next two or three years. The only reason why I pushed over more too because the only tree that you have with the trunk coming straight up out of the ground is a formal upright. Every other style, the tree's got to have a, a bit of an angle one way or the other. It has got quite a good root system, the roots are well radiated, that will come later, right, so what we do down here is important at the moment. We've changed the angle of the tree, uh, we've buried this side a little bit more and uh, we've raised some roots up on this side. We've got to let these grow to balance that so we can balance the whole tree for the future. But it's on the start of becoming a really good, good looking bonsai. Is the nail staying in? Sorry? Is the nail staying the nail, in the trunk? The nail stays in there, yes. That's good. This, you might notice there's a nail being put mm. in the back. That's used for tying branches down. Uh, you can still use use things like the tying branches down. Good eyesight, makes sense. I'll She's in the front row. Now, with a pot like this, every pot has a has a front. Believe it or not, or or even round pots, they have a little. They have basically three legs, and this leg starts from here. To up oh, there, and there's another one here. So all the it's a perfect these are perfect the same width between those three legs. So when you get a tree of this nature, you're trying to develop into where it's all the growth up here, nothing down here, which is like easy to do, easy to explain on this leg, this has got five, that's got five, five feet. Where this hollow is, that's the centre of the tree, that's where the front of the tree is. So the tree's been positioned to match the centre of the pot. On a, tree, on a pot with three, four or five legs that's sort of hexagonal or round shape, to make it look slightly unstable, you have a leg facing you at the front. To make it even, you have a flat side of the pot towards you. If you have the point facing you, it just gives the illusion of the trees 
on the point of balance. And it's got to be so perfectly balanced to make it look right. If you have a flat face, it's, it's a bit bland. So always use the odd looking shape as a front of your pot, whether it's hexagonal, octagonal, round, choose a point and use that as a feature. This is so discreet, if I hadn't put the chopsticks there, you wouldn't have known the hole was there. But all round pots, you will do that. This one, for instance, the same. One there, one there, one there. If they do it this way, once at least you can get your fingers underneath when you try and move the pot. Because if you have a tree like that, or a heavier tree, you can't move it. This will at least give you a chance to lift the pot up. Uh, but also it allows water to drain away between that comes out of the pot and drains away off the bench too. So it is there for a reason. Well, um, a really nice, a really nice tree. It's developing really well um, from what it was. <laughs> I mean, it was nice before, but we've, we have done over a couple of bits of work on it over the years. But mainly what I've got this down to show you is um, a lot of elms, quarter bark elms, usually have a gap from the base. It doesn't always cork down to the base of the tree. It's, a, it's what, what they do. And sometimes this can make the tree look a little bit inverted with an inverted base, but in actual fact it isn't. But it is with the effects of this bark. So this is where a little bit of cheating comes into play, or can come into play. And that's quite easy, easily done. I'm sure you can go into some other friend of yours has got Chinese elms and take their bark off. And you, what you do is to get a piece of bark, matching if you can, and they can easily be glued on into position around here too, so you get the continuation of the bark to the ground. You think the Japanese don't do it? Yes, they do. <laughs> because that's, that's the way these elms are, it'll never grow, so to give the illusion of it, that's what you, what you can do is to give the illusion of the bark coming around by sticking onto it, no problems at all. Can Honest you, cheating. Honest cheating. If you say we were removing a branch that had a lot of cork on it, could you take the bark off that and Absolutely. put it down lower? Yeah. Uh, if you have if you have a tree die, if you have a corky bark tree die, which unfortunately can happen, don't throw the tree out. Keep the tree because you can always take it off. It's cork, so it can come up by easily. Slice it off and work out how to blend it in to the other rest of the tree. It can happen. What kind of glue would you use? Um, just a, a, a wood glue, it's fine. Aqua here, water-based wood, wood glue. Yeah, wood glue is good. So it, Super glue, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to choose. So there's no way you can actually have living <coughs> bark on that, on, on the bottom piece? It won't break. Okay. It doesn't break. You might get a bit more down here, but it won't be much more. Yeah. Pine trees, any tree you want to do, if you can't get the bark where you want it to do, as we have done, we have done a bit of cheating already over the weekend on one of the trees, which is just coming up soon. You can do that to give the illusion of it being there, of uh, meeting all the requirements then that you wanted to, to look quite natural. One of the other things too, um, I'm, sure, yeah, I'm sure we can put this down so you can look at it later, later on throughout the evening. Um, you didn't have many good visible surface roots yet because they're still growing. So what we do is, is create an optical illusion. I put some roots there that aren't really there. It's a very simple way of doing it. It's just to get some, some moss mount the soil up to run away from the trunk of the tree. And you mount the moss over so it looks as though the roots have gone underground and are running away from the tree underground. It looks quite simple. There's a real one, there is a real real one at the back, so no one will believe it's not real. You can also get a little bit of, uh, say, a branch off the tree or root off the tree, whatever, and stick it underground and put the moss over that. Then you see a bit of uh, the existing root of the tree. It looks like it's exactly the same part of the tree. 
coming up to showtime, all these little things are important. Think, remember all these because you may have to do them to your trees. <laughs> so these are all acceptable norms of what you can do for your trees. This looks very flat. So the same thing could be done. And the other thing too is try not to, I know we've had a lot of rain so the moss has grown up now and we don't see much moss very often. So try and get us, don't let the moss completely overtake your pots. Always try and keep about a third of the space, air, air of the, the, the pot without moss on it. Because you need oxygen to get into the roots. If you've got moss here, the oxygen can't get through. And if it's really dry in the middle of summer, you'll find the rain won't get through either. So, always try, or you're watering, so always try and make sure you only keep a portion around the base of the tree. Which is uncanny really, because if you look at trees in nature, it's the other way around. The moss is not under the trees, it's away from the canopy of the trees, because the canopy takes away a lot of the light that moss must have. So we can put all the debris around the base of the tree and have the moss on the edge. That's actually more of an authentic look. But it's not a good look for bonsai, so we have to do it the other way around. So again, see I, I could have done this before I came, and you would never have known that the roots weren't there. And if you well, you may have covered the moss, you get a nice dip, dip or sunlight effect. That's right. <laughs> Let's come into that. Different coloured mosses too can help too, because that gives the illusion of light and depth. If you want to make a tree look um, uh, older, then try and get the moss, which is more like lichen, so it's grey looking. That gives a feeling of age as well. Um, if you want to make the tree look um, older, um, uh, younger, use fresh bright green moss. But on older trees, try and get the darker moss. More difficult to get, but it, it, it suits the tree quite okay. And if you, got, if you do have the grey moss, put it at the back of the tree because that gives a feeling of distance. The blueness tends to give a feeling of fading away into the background. So the blue moss is quite good if you can find it. If you've got a square pot, a rectangular pot, I should say not a square, rectangular pot, a pot that is got square sides, very square sides, these are what we call scallop, <coughs> scallop sides. If you've got a square pot, square edges. Always try and make a tree to be quite formal because a square pot represents formality. So a formal pot should have a rectangular pot. If it's a little bit softer and got a bit of fluidity in the branches, so this would be good, a square rectangular pot would be good for a formal upright. If you've got softer curved edges like the scallop pot, that's good for a tree that's um, a little bit more feminine perhaps with a few branch branches that have got movement in the branches. This sort of pot would be good for it. Um, the guidelines as you know for a brown or terracotta pots are basically for pines or conifers, but it's not a rule. They say you can't put a pine in a, in a pot this colour, why not? If you're happy with it and you like it, the sort has got to please. But they do look better in the darker shades. But there's no rules on doing that. It's only a matter of choice. If you've got an oval pot, perfect for informal trees, any style of tree, um, except a formal one. Formal looks wrong in an oval pot. You try and do it, it'll look to totally wrong. So don't be scared to place any type of tree again in, in an oval pot. Most trees suit an oval pot. The fig trees here do always suit oval pots. Oval pots are slightly more feminine perhaps you might say. So maples, um, nice evergreens, um, figs look good in oval pots. I only keep the square side of pots for more formal looking trees.